Good morning, friends. This is Vas. Welcome to my channel. This channel is about Antalya, Antilanders, about Turkey and living in Turkey. Welcome. You can subscribe, you can leave some comments and questions, leave some likes if you find this video helpful. I try to answer questions as I get them and I try to find the answers. I may take some time before I answer your question. Sometimes those questions are rather specific and they require me to research. Once I find the answer, you will see it. Because most likely not only you ask this question, but somebody else did too. I will start my video today with telling you a story. There was a person who was visiting a far, far away country and uh, after this guest spent some time with the host, they decided to go for a walk and they walked to the cemetery. It's probably a strange place to walk, but bear with me because there is an important message here. So they're walking around tombstones and looking at some beautiful sculptures and the engravings. Then the host stops by one of the tombstones and says, This is uh, my uncle. He lived for five years. So they continue walking and they walked a little bit further and he points to another tombstone and says, this is my other uncle. He lived for nine years. That's kind of strange. They keep on walking and the host stops again and points to another tombstone and says, This is my grandfather. He lived for eight years. And the guest is started wondering and asked him, How come? What's going on? How your grandfather can be only eight years old? And he says, the host says, you see, in our country, life counts only when you have dwelling or house, when you have all the things which you need, and you enjoy life. That is your true life. So the point is, some people come to Antalya exactly for that, while in other countries, people are running after their tail and like dogs. Uh, here, people come and live. And Turkish government now seems like they changed the policy. And my suspicion that they changed the policy in anticipation of crisis in Eastern Europe. Many people arrive here and uh, residents, when you apply for residence on the ground of uh, leasing apartment, renting apartment, Often people get denial, regardless of what country they come from. The easiest way to do now is to buy property or to marry. For some people, second is easier than the first. Yesterday we had a storm in Antalya, pretty heavy storm, and the streets were flooded. I took a cab going back home from the restaurant. By the way, there is a great restaurant which has a terrace on the very top. It's called Turkai uh, Hotel. And on the very top, they have bar and restaurant. That's where I was. On the way back, I took a cab and the streets were literally flooded, probably 30 to 40 centimeters. That was a very heavy rain. Uh, I saw some buildings which had even damage to them, light damage, but there was a damage. And uh, the cab had to go around some of the streets because the traffic was so heavy. The reason I'm telling you that is because if you are buying the property in Antalya, you have to consider that if you buy in the ground floor, which Turkish called Girish, you have to be careful what you're buying. If you are buying certain areas where it's low, the apartment could be flooded, it could become moldy. If uh, you're buying on the high grounds, it may be okay. It may be just fine. In even the underground the dungeon may not be flooded in fact i saw some apartments where they are on the ground floor but because the entire building is sort of like on the hill there is no problem with that if you are looking for better price girish or ground floor could be just what you're looking for and if you have a mobility problems if you are older you may also consider that so the price point is important. It's usually lower than the apartments on the uh, floors. And the other thing is the accessibility is very easy. 
If you are in good area, that's not a problem. And there are some areas and people have their iron uh, bars on their windows. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, kind of a intimidating to me buying into that kind of apartment but maybe they need it i've seen it on different buildings and people put those iron bars the other question which i wanted to answer in this video is about business of coffee in turkey you see if you're looking at turkey from the outside you may have this fantasy that you can come and open a coffee shop in Antalya or any other place in Turkey. Turkish culture is rather traditional and that tradition is to have Turkish coffee. Younger people, people who are looking up for the uh, Western experience sometimes go to the Starbucks or restaurants which are similar to Starbucks where they would have coffee machines, they would order cappuccino, they would order latte, they would order a filter coffee. Practically anywhere you go, you can order Turkish coffee and it is usually served in a small cup and it's very strong coffee and it's served with the water. It's available. The taste of Turkish coffee in general is very, it's, it, it, it's different everywhere and it is usually blend. You can buy like a single source coffee, it's available and you can make it home. I think in most coffee shops you will just get some kind of a blend. I have a friend who has very large coffee roster and they import coffee from different countries. Right now I think the prices of coffee are high. Actually, probably prices of anything right now would be high anywhere in the world because manufacturing and production was uh, slow. Nevertheless, they import and they have a very large coffee roster. It's a half a ton, metric ton, uh, per load. So they can produce a lot of roasted coffee and they ship it all over uh, Turkey and they even ship it abroad. So if you are in a foreign country and you would, buy, would like to buy some coffee from Turkey, roasted in Turkey, um, leave me some comments, send me some questions. I will put you in touch with that person and maybe you can do some business. If you're thinking about coming to Turkey and of opening your own coffee shop, I would not suggest doing that. At least not fantasizing about it until you come and live some time in Turkey because your perception will change. And the other thing is there are lots of other opportunities probably that you will face once you are in Turkey. Uh, people do all sorts of things. Some people are doing it... Uh, Informally, they're doing some little business from their apartment, like making some uh, sauces, making some kimchi, making some pastries. And I don't, I, I know some of those people personally, they just have a circle of friends which they would sell it and they make some cash, little cash. But in general, there are some other opportunities, good opportunities. And I would say that coffee shop is probably not one of them. As far as the prices of uh, real estate, I don't see them moving. As far as Turkish Lira, it is getting a little weaker this week. I observed it. And uh, the reason for Turkish Lira to become weaker is that uh, exports seems to be not filling up the treasury of Turkey as fast as people would hoped. And uh, the exports are not very high-priced, high-tech, complicated items. That's probably the reason. So the disbalance in trade is getting higher and Turkish Lira is getting lower. That is it for today. All the best to you guys. Stay healthy, stay uh, in tune and balance because the world is really moving sideways and uh, the world is changing too. I'm Vas, welcome to my channel, good luck.